Welcome to my Guardian Druid Guide for Legion, patch 7.2.5. Currently, Guardian Druids are one of the strongest tanking specs in the game. They excel in smoothing out incoming damage and benefit from a powerful and very straightforward active negation system. They have the benefit of choice. They can reduce physical or magic damage or chose to heal. Combine this with a high pull of HP, lots of cooldowns such as Barskin, Survival Instincts, and a very strong artifact ability, and you have a rock Sodic tank. Guardian Druids are not a difficult class to play, but very difficult to master. So in this guide I will try to cover the basic mechanics of the class. We will begin with the offensive abilities followed by the defensive ones. I will also cover talents, artifact weapon, playstyle and rotation, stats priority, consumables, macros and weakeras that I currently use of course. In this part I will get over the offensive abilities. There is three abilities that are single target, Mangle, Mole and Moonfire. Let's get over it. Mangle is an ability that does roughly 350k physical damage and 20% more if the target has bleeds effects on it. It costs nothing, but there's a cooldown of 5 seconds. Mole is a powerful spender ability that does roughly 540k physical damage. It costs 45 rage. Moonfire is our spell damage dealer that does 50k when applied and take for 16 seconds for a total of 500k magical damage, which is usable in bear form. Outside of those three uh, single target abilities, there is two abilities that are AoE damage, Trash and Swipe. Trash is an AoE ability that will reach any target inside a 17 yard radius. It does make the target bleeds and grant Mangle an extra 20% damage. It does 250k bleed damage on application and an additional 65k over 15 seconds. To generate rage, you can auto attack, trash, swipe or mangle. You will not receive rage for taking damage. The generated rage can be spent to use offensive or defensive ability such as iron 4, frenzied regeneration, or mole. In addition to that, you have a passive ability called Gore that allows you when you use Trash, Swipe, Moonfire and Mole to get a 30% chance to reset the cooldown of Mangle and generate 4 Rage. In this section of the guide I will explain the defensive abilities. Iron Fear provides 80% increase armor for 6 seconds. This ability should be used to prevent physical damage and should be used with some Tau to time it along with periods of high damage intake. Iron Fear can be stacked. It means that you can use it twice if you pull maximum rage. That way it can be used against powerful attacks. Frenzied Regeneration heals you for 50% of the damage you have taken in the last 5 seconds as a 3 second uh, heal over time. It has 2 charge and cost 10 rage to use. Additionally, it is not on the global cooldown, meaning you can use it anytime. Survival Instincts has 2 charge and reduce all the damage you take by 50% for 6 seconds. It's on a 3 minute cooldown, so you need to use it carefully on situations that you know that you will take a large amount of damage. Rage of the Slipper Reduce all the damage you take by 25% for 10 seconds and reflect damage. Ideally, you want to make good use of this item since it's on a short cooldown. Time it well to obtain as much cast as you can. Our last defensive cooldown is Barskin. It reduces all the damage you take by 20% for 12 seconds. It can be magical or physical. In this following part I will cover the talents and the artifact weapon. You will get an overview of all the talents from tier 1 to 7. And for the last part of this video I will cover the artifact weapon. Which path should you take and why? Brembo is a passive ability that increases our DPS. It should be taken where there is no survivability issues, but instead to increase your damage overall. 
That means you want to use on cooldown bar skin to maximize the damage output. Bristling Fur is a 40 second cooldown that generates rage from damage you take for 8 seconds. This is the best choice for survivability on single target and low cliff situation due to his high rage generation and ability to time it with the boss abilities. While it is active, you are spending the incoming rage quickly and efficiently so that you don't cap the rage. You will take high amount of damage to generate the most rage. In addition, do not stack ability like reduction abilities, as you will generate less rage because you are taking less damage. Blood Frenzy causes trash to generate two rage each time it deals damage. If it's, if it's talented, it is important to keep your trash bleed up permanently on multiple targets to maximize on rage generation. This is the best option for survivability during cleave or airy situations, because it will provide high passive rage generation. Guttural Roars provides the highest group benefit by improving the range and cooldown of Stampeding Roar. It means you can use a speed buff for your group more often. Intimidating Roar replaces Incapacitating Roar, which causes its disorient to not break on damage. Only useful if you require an AoE stun. Wild Charge provides you a various extra mobility depending on which shape fo shift form you are currently in. Balance Affinity increases the range of all our, of our abilities by 5 yards, as well as giving us access to multiple balance spells. Feral Affinity increases our movement speed by 15%, as well as giving us access to multiple Feral spells. This talent should be your go-to choice. If you want to maximize your DPS on single target raid encounters by cat weaving, Restoration Affinity grant us a passive heal, as well as giving us access to multiple restoration spells. You should take this talent if you feel like you will need the extra survivability that it provide. However, the other two talents in this row are more preferable for the mage and utility in most cases. Mighty Bash is a stun ability. It stuns the target for 5 seconds. It has a cooldown of 50 seconds. It is useful if you need to stun a particular target. Mass Entanglement is an AoE route that can be useful for crowd control. But <laughs> it breaks really often because of the damage taken. So it's pretty unreadable. Typhoon is a knockback ability. It's kinda nice because you can use it to interrupt multiple mobs at the same time. It should be one of your default talent choice in my opinion. Because of this utility overall. Soul of the Forest causes Mangle to generate more rage and deal 25% more damage. Unfortunately, this talent is weak because of his AOE benefits and rather low damage uh, rage generation. Sorry, it's probably good for a single target encounter. Incarnation Guardian of Ursoc is a 3 minute cooldown that gives us an improved bear form for 30 seconds. It provides us 50% more armor, causes Mangle to cleave, and reduces the cooldown of Growl and melee DPS abilities, like Trash, which is off cooldown. This talent is useful in Mythic Plus situation, where you do massive pulls, because it removes the cooldown of Trash ability. You ideally want to spam it non-stop until Incarnation wear off. Galactic Guardian has a 10% chance to proc from your attacks, and causes it to cast a free Moonfire as well as a buff your next Moonfire cast to deal 300% more direct damage and generate 8 Rage. This talent provides us the highest Rage generation on this tier, as well as a strong cleave and AoE bonus by making Moonfire easier to maintain multiple targets. Because of this, Moonfire becomes our highest priority to cast when it is proc active. Galactic Guardian should be taken in most situations. Hurt Warden causes Trash to grant us a buff that reduces the damage of the next auto attack we take by 30%, stacking up to 3 times. 
As this talent only reduces damage from auto attacks and not other abilities, it is rather weak in comparison to the other talents. Guardian of Elune causes Mango to increase the duration of your next Iron 4 by 2 seconds, or to increase the healing by next frenzied regeneration by 20%. This talent should be your go-to choice this year, as it increases frenzy regeneration healing is very strong along with the ability to have higher active mitigation uptime. Survival of the fittest reduces the cooldown of bar skin and survival instinct by 33%. This talent is rather situational, but could be useful if an encounter requires you to have cooldowns available again sooner. Additionally, this talent can provide a minor DPS increase paired with Brambles, as it allows more frequent bar skin use. Ren and Tear increases your damage done and reduces your damage taken from the target by 2% for each stack of trash you have applied. It is well combined if you have the legendary legs it is this everlasting encasement then this talent becomes a more viable pick for defensive purpose too. The added benefit of random tier with Helis's everlasting casement is that it will be more damage than running pulverize. It is also one less thing to think about as it is a passive. Lunar Beam deals high AoE damage and healing over 8 seconds. This talent can be useful in lower mythic plus dungeons where targets don't live long enough to apply high trash tags for for rend and tear. Lunar Beam should be used to burst down any wing pack of mobs and to provide some burst healing utility to your group. However, I do not suggest this talent. Pulverize consumes 2 stacks of trash to deal and reduce all the mage we take by 9% for 20 seconds. It is a talent for survivability and raid and challenging mythic plus. Now let's get over with the artifact weapon path. The first threat is Iron Claw whenever you will get your artifact weapon. You want to go acquire the first gold trait which empower your artifact weapon use. It will allow you to get like leech effect and become Im immune, immune to immobility effect. It will empower your trash ability and most defensive abilities you got. The next gold trait is at the bottom called Gory Fuhrer. It will grant the ability of Mangol a 50% chance to reduce the rage costs of Iron Fuhrer. Remember, Iron Fuhrer is one of your best ability to reduce, mitigate the incoming damage. And you can apply 2-3 to three stacks if you maximum pull the rage. The last gold trait is a passive ability. Whenever you, you take elemental damage, you have 10% chance to grant a, redirec a redirection for 15 seconds. Then you want to fill the rest of the minor traits so you can get Ursoc bound at the bottom. It will grant you 6% uh, passive armor. Now if you noticed, you have unlocked like minor traits. One more point, now they are 3 out of 4. Even if it's not tempting, don't go for it. You will prioritize the gold traits on the right side of your screen. It will either buff you as a damage output or reduce the damage taken, which is really, really good because of the extra trash you can generate. Now you can fill out the minor traits. Uh, rather not fill the one with stamina or armor first. You want to buff your damage output before everything. As soon as you're finished with the minor one, you will get the last one, which gives you 50 points in it. Uh, trust me, uh, it's not worth the AP grind, just uh, passively earn your AP. The initial Corker Dance buff is really good. But as you can see, the artifact power requirements can go way higher. And now we're stuck at 40, and in patch uh, 7.3 will be at... Um, artifact knowledge 50 so I mean it, it's it's a really long long grind so the first part of the guide is over guys uh, that's pretty much it I hope you liked it if you didn't well it's 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 up to you man sorry um, but yeah I will cover other parts uh, soon uh, it's just a lot of work and I want it to be done so I just got uh, shorter for this one so 
If you liked it, uh, you can support me by subscribing or you can like my videos. And thanks for the support, guys. See you soon.